Hey, I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation. Welcome back to another installment of Aviation News. There's a lot to cover today, so let's get right to it. The first thing up today, KLM have received their very first Airbus A321neo. This is very exciting, as it marks the first Airbus to KLM in more than 15 years. Additionally, the A321neo is the next generation version to replace their aging Boeing 737 fleet. For those who don't know, last year KLM was making a decision between the Airbus A320neo family versus the 737 MAX family, and they chose the Neo. Compared to the 737, the A321neo is around 21% more fuel efficient. Additionally, KLM feel that the A321neo further helps their relationship with Airbus in terms of future orders. And in the end, the A321neo looks beautiful on the inside and the outside. Staying in Europe, our next item of news comes in the form of German carrier Condor, who have retired their very last Boeing 767. Condor received their very first Boeing 767 in the summer of 1991. This aircraft became quite popular with the airline, filling it up with lots of high-demand premium seats, including some of the very first lie-flat seats on a budget carrier. However, despite their love for the 767, the plane is now growing old and becoming quite inefficient compared to many modern examples. As of the production of this video, all of Condor's Boeing 767s have been fully phased out and retired. The aircraft are to be replaced with Airbus A33900neos, which don't get me wrong, also look pretty good. However, the Boeing 767 will surely be missed by aviation enthusiasts and plane spotters worldwide. The next item of aviation news today, California will ban leaded aviation fuels by 2031. This news isn't super surprising, considering California's strict emission standards, and the path to leaded free aviation fuels has been going on for more than 25 years, however it's yet to be fully implemented. Eventually, all of the fuels in the general aviation industry will be fully unleaded. Given that this will eventually happen in California, it's likely other states will follow. Additionally, this will only impact general aviation small airplanes, like your Cessnas and your Pipers, since main-sized big jet airliners like 767s and planes of that nature don't use leaded fuel and haven't since the 1980s. But perhaps one of the biggest items of aviation news, Star Alliance carrier and founding member SAS will leave Star Alliance. This is a shocking twist, as SAS, as I mentioned, was one of the founding airlines of Star Alliance. However, the airline claimed in press statements that the alliance no longer fits the goals of this airline, and other alliances, mainly SkyTeam, feel they should have SAS, and SAS feel they'd make a better partner with SkyTeam. You have to think that part of this has to do with their long partnership with Delta Airlines, one of the founding members of SkyTeam. Additionally, this means SAS passengers will have greater connectivity from the Scandinavian regions onto carriers like Delta, Air France, KLM, or Virgin Atlantic for their transatlantic connections, or their domestic itineraries with Delta. Other exciting news, UAE-based carrier Emirates Airlines has received their very first Airbus A350. This is exciting as it marks a transition in Emirates' future from some older inefficient aircraft like Airbus A380s and 777-200ERs to the Airbus A350 and upcoming Boeing 777X. It's not super noteworthy, however I just thought I'd mention it in this news update. Additionally, UAE-based carrier Etihad Airways has launched a $700 million cabin overhaul to extend the life of their Airbus A380s past 2030. This comes a bit much global expansion by the carrier trying to fly the Airbus A380 long into the future. Next up, we move on to JetBlue, who have announced they will enter the airline lounge game. JetBlue hopes to open their first ever lounges in JFK and Boston to hop onto their transatlantic service that already exists by 2025. The lounges are supposed to be a fresh, funky feel that carries the airline's aesthetic all the way from the flight to your destination. They look like they're on the right track, that's for sure. Next we have Iceland Air, who have announced they will retire their Boeing 757 fleet. This is sad news for sure. The 
Boeing 757 was introduced with Iceland Air on January 1st of 1983, the same time when Eastern Airlines introduced the plane to their roofs, and has been with the carrier since its introduction. Iceland Air will retire its very last Boeing 757 by October of 2024. Unfortunately, that means your chances of flying an Iceland Air 757 are not likely. The 757 is no longer very efficient compared to a lot of modern options, like the A321neo and the 737 MAX, both of which Iceland Air have on order. The next item of news concerns Brazilian jet manufacturer Embraer. Boeing and Embraer have finally settled upon an agreed amount of a deal to be paid after Boeing terminated their plans to acquire the jet maker. Boeing has settled for more than $150 million that they will pay Embraer after termination of the deal. Also, I have to mention, I was lucky enough to visit Brazil back in March and see the Embraer facilities from the outside, which is where most of these pictures have come from. I also made a full video all about the Embraer Aviation Museum there in São José dos Campos, Brazil, so make sure to check out that video linked in the upper right. Additionally, the Boeing 777X is also running behind schedule again, but that is nothing new, so we're not going to discuss it anymore. Finally, United Airlines has announced they will lease 20 Airbus A321neos to help cover their fleet shortages due to delays in 737 MAX aircraft. For those who are unaware, United has been frustrated with Boeing and the 737 MAX program for many months now ever since the blowout with the Alaska Airlines example and the pause of production and delivery. United is fed up with the program, and by leasing more A321neos, hopes to send a message to Boeing to speed things up. Perhaps the largest shocker, the NBA will lease A321neo jets to be configured in a VIP configuration for the basketball players. For those who didn't know, the NBA have flown a number of business-like aircraft for their players for many years now. However, the A321neo will be by far their largest jet, especially since the NBA has plans to lease 13 of these A321neos. This is definitely an interesting development, and another blow to Boeing, as the National Basketball Association of the United States has chosen to go with Airbus, a competitor. Well, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you're enjoying this series of aviation news, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And until next time, I'll be wishing you blue skies and tailwinds.